So when you are looking at the basic sequences, you should be able to identify a few things. What is the purpose of the sequence? Why this particular sequence is being done? And underlying physics a little bit so that you will understand the sequence in a better way. Normal appearances, how the normal anatomy looks on that particular sequence and what could be the mimics in that particular sequence. And finally, what to look for in each of these sequences. Let's start our discussion with diffusion weighted imaging. Coming to the diffusion weighted imaging. What is diffusion? What is the physiological basis of diffusion weighted imaging? If you consider this small area, there will be multiple number of cells are present in between the space is called as interstitial space or extracellular space. Water molecule will be able to diffuse freely within this interstitial space. If it has to move in and out of the cell, it will do so with the help of certain receptors. This is the normal diffusion which is happening in the brain parenchyma. How do we acquire the diffusion images? We will acquire a baseline image or B0 image without application of diffusion gradient. Then we will apply the diffusion gradient in all three planes at the same location. And we will combine these images using ecoplanar imaging. Finally, when you get a post-processed diffusion weighted image, you will get three sets of images. One will be a B0 or T2 weighted image and you will get a ISO diffusion weighted images and a ADC map or apparent diffusion coefficient maps. So these are the three sets of images you will get. So what is restricted diffusion? When you appreciate bright signal on the diffusion image with corresponding dark signal on ADC, that is when you call that as restricted diffusion. So what is the reason for this restricted diffusion? Let's take a common example like infab. In case of acute ischemia, cytotoxic edema occurs. Because the cells are swollen up, the space for the water molecule in the extracellular compartment will come down, leading to restriction of water molecular movement that is seen as bright signal on diffusion and dark signal on ADC. That is when you call that as restricted diffusion. So the real reason for restricted diffusion here is reduction of the extracellular space. By understanding this concept, you can apply the diffusion sequence in multiple other scenarios also. Just for example, if there is increased cellularity like lymphoma or medulloblastoma, if you consider the same small area, if there are more number of cells in this area, invariably the extracellular space will come down leading to reduction of water molecular movement leading to restricted diffusion. So it need not be an acute infarct, it can be many other conditions. Now, there are some scenarios where even if you see bright signal on the diffusion, you may not call that as restricted diffusion because of something called as T2 shine through. As shown previously, the B0 image is nothing but a T2 weighted image. So anything that looks bright on the T2 weighted image, it may look bright on the diffusion weighted images also. So before labeling something as restricted diffusion, you should make sure that the same area is showing dark signal on the ADC. Apart from the T2 shine through, there are some other areas where normal bright signal can be present. One common area is the center of the midbrain or along the posterior limbs of internal capsules along the corticospinal tract. Other areas along the basic temporal lobes in the cortices or along the basic frontal lobe in the cortices. This occurs because of artifactual bright signal secondary to anisotropy effects because of EPA sequence. So looking at the brainstem, this artifactual signal always occurs in the center of the midbrain. If you see the bright signal in the paramedian location, it is definitely abnormal. Similarly, when you are looking at the posterior limbs of internal capsule, if there is any asymmetry between the bright signal, then you should consider that as abnormal. So what to look for when you are looking on the diffusion sequence? So when you are looking on the diffusion image, make sure to look for any abnormal bright signals anywhere in the parenchyma be it in the cortices, be it in the white matter, even in small foci in the posterior fossa or the hippocampal formations. So what to look beyond in diffusion sequence? When you are looking in the diffusion weighted images, not only the brain parenchyma, but appreciate the other areas also. Most importantly, the ural sinuses, extracerebral sulcal spaces or even the ventricular system. You should be able to appreciate the bright signals not only in the parenchyma but outside of the parenchyma also. Normal calvarium will not give any signal in the diffusion images. So if you see any signal in the bony areas, it is definitely abnormal. It can be a skull base osteomyelitis, it can be a marrow reconversion or it can be a metastatic etiology also. One thing you should remember is always start your sequences with diffusion imaging 
because majority of the acute pathologies they may show restricted diffusion and it will help you to put forward a pathophysiology in the first sequence itself any bright signal you should be able to pick up on the diffusion weighted imaging